This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Everyone's here is super smiling. His message of unconditional love. Boys in the Air Force, super smiling. Here to save the day. Kindness is the way. And action. We begin now. Hi, everybody. We are now on a super smiley adventure where we know that animals are healers and teachers and that they will always lead us on grand adventures if we're just open to what they have to say and where they have to lead. I'm Megan Blake, dog trainer and the pet lifestyle coach. On our show here, you get pet information, but even better inspiration and integration of all things you can use to enhance your life with your pet. Our show is inspired by and named after my beautiful, handsome dog, Super Smiley, who led me on a lifetime of adventures, and his spirit lives eternal. Smiley was a shelter dog who was abandoned three times on the streets of downtown Los Angeles, and he survived and inspired the world's first kindness program, Teaching Kids Kindness Through Pets, the Super Smiley Project. We traveled the country speaking to thousands of kids about the lessons pets can teach us. And his work is so on point with our show today and with our amazing guest. The topic today is the inspiration and spirit of dogs in movies. So first, to set this all up for you all. Now, you all know that Smiley was a film and television actor, too. His last film was part of the Hallmark Channel series called The Ultimate Legacy, where Smiley played the legendary Raquel Welsh's dog. Smiley's film series, For Kindness, won him many film festival awards all across the United States and the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Los Angeles Film Festival. Smiley also appeared many times on my PBS television series, Animal Attractions TV, teaching us all what dogs need from their people. Now, what you all may not know, because this is a show about dogs and what they do, but I'm an actor too. I've been in over 40 film and television projects and have acted opposite megastars, including Elizabeth Taylor, Will Ferrell, Mark Harmon, and many, many, many more. I've been to the world-famous Cannes Film Festival in France, and I got to travel to London for the world premiere of my sci-fi film, Iborgs. So with all that background... You will see while this guest today, while our special guest today is extra special to me and how he resonates so powerfully on our show. A little bit more, the con, so everybody understands the con film festival is held yearly in France and honors all the top films of the year. The top award there is the coveted Palme d'Or award. And there also exists the Palm dog award celebrating dog performances on the big screen. The coveted Palm Dog Collar is presented by Mr. Toby Rose. And Toby has now also created the Fido's, the grand awards for incredible dogs on screen. And we must know more. So I'm so thrilled to welcome Toby Rose to our show. Hi, Toby. Welcome. Good evening, America. (laughs) Good morning, (laughs) Vietnam. And hello to the (laughs) smiley. So, Toby, where are you? I love your beautiful accent. Where are you in the world today? I am in King's Cross, St Pancras. And as you know, St Pancras is the terminus uh, in the UK of the Eurostar, which reaches down in, through, to Fran- through France to Cannes. So yes. I feel a sort of I can literally touch the rail and be on the Riviera. Wow, that is so amazing. And so, Toby, yes, you mentioned can. I mentioned can. So let's start at the very, very, very beginning. First, tell us about your background in film and about the Palm Dog Award. Start at the beginning. Well, this will almost sound like we're going back to what you were talking about earlier, because obviously, and not for the first time, a dog has inspired something wonderful. And obviously, Super Smiley inspired you. And uh, my inspiration was a fox terrier born in Champagne, bought in a flea market, taken to Paris, hitched a ride with my showbiz journalism world, met all the celebs, did a short film, went to Cannes and inspired the creation of the Palm Dog, which is the world's leading, foremost and foremost awards for dogs on the big screen. Oh, wait, I have to stop you. Did you say Paul Most Award? Uh, there's a pun in there somewhere. <laughs> I love which you it. you probably got. I love it. I love. So tell us more. Tell us more. Well, Motley is the most gorgeous creature 
sadly no longer with. But as you earlier said, and I echo that, he lives on very much through these awards. Uh, Muttley was unbelievably charismatic and wonderful and lived with me and my other half in Paris, in the Marais, in the centre of Paris. And from that base, he would uh, go out to film festivals such as Deauville and the Gérardme Film Festival. Also, and possibly should have been mentioned first, the Cannes Film Festival. Yes. And made quite some impact there. And his short film was in the short film section in Cannes. And um, we felt the inspiration directly linked to that appearance in Cannes, that the fact that he was so fabulous and wonderful on the screen, but had no chance because of no existence of an award, but he so merited one. Now, we didn't create the award and immediately give him a prize, but what we did was something with the bigger heart, which was to say, look, if a dog makes a good an appearance on in a film, he most assuredly deserves a prize, as does uh, his fellow human actors. I totally agree. And I, you said his name was Muttley, right? Mutts after the mutt, right? Well, Muttley is very much inspired by the fabulous export from the United States, which was called in the UK at least, Wacky Racers. And Dick <laughs> Dastardly had a dog called Muttley, and his laugh was just so wonderful. It wasn't as beautiful and chiming lovely as your laugh just then. It was more of a snicker (laughs) and was always a very wonderful uh, counterpoint to the grand standing of Dick Dastardly. He was real. He kept it real for the viewer and everyone loved him. I love that. And I love that you said he kept it real. His name was Muttley. And in Smiley's, one of Smiley's songs, he says, Mutt's rock, it's true. Because Smiley was absolutely a mutt too. And we just, ah, we love our dogs no matter what they are. And we both have mentioned the Cannes Film Festival. So just briefly, can you describe what it's like to be there? I mean, we've seen pictures just on the Riviera. Can you just describe it for our our audience here? Well, I can certainly tell you that it is a beautifully curated glamour moment with the most beautifully lit glamour moments. It's a backdrop of azure, beautiful blue sea. There are waving palms. There's plenty of red carpet and lashings of rosé wine. So with that colour palette, you cannot go wrong. And when you add to that little paw prints, then you've got something really wonderful. And you described that beautifully, perfectly. Well done. Thank you. Now, to share with everyone the soul-touching, powerful performances that dogs have given to the world, who were some of the dog performances who won the Palm Dog Award that that you remember? Like, I think of Uggy from The Artist. Did he win one? Do you remember that performance? I remember it extremely well. And that was a moment where the Palm Dog Award gained something of a crossover notoriety because at the press conference prior to Cannes, which um, listed the selected films, the Palm Dog was mentioned when the artist, the black and white Oscar-winning epic in which he starred, when that was mentioned to the hard-bitten, grizzled members of the film community, someone chipped in to say, well, that's going to get a Palm Dog. And that prediction was correct. And I was lucky enough to meet Uggy twice. Ah. Uh, once, which was very wonderful and cinematic and sort of spooky. I was, uh, it was early evening, quite dark, so it was the end of the year, uh, uh, late autumn. And he was on a promotional tour for the artist coming into London, notably to a big BBC chat show. And as I walked out of Marble Arch tube station, I was walking down the road looking for his hotel. (laughs) But as I'm concentrating and focusing on looking for his hotel, I see a dog doing his necessary business against the lamppost. And I said, it could be, it might be, I think it is. It was Uggy. And I felt, what a connection to make. And the second time I met him, which is probably worth shipping in on, is a few months later, I met him in uh, Paris in the, on the Champs-Élysées because he was there to present to the French public his autobiography. And that was very exciting. So we gave him a prize in Cannes. I met him peeing on a lamppost in London. 
And then I was lucky enough to see him with his trainer, Omar von Muller, and his owner, Omar, in Paris at the drugstore Publicis in the shadow of the Arc de Triomphe. The Arc de Triomphe. Oh, those are beautiful, beautiful stories. And I want to say I also had the honor of meeting Uggy and Olaf. And um, this was at the Genesis Awards presented by the Humane Society of the United States. And I interviewed him on the red carpet. So I got to meet Uggy and see him do some beautiful little things. And also James Cromwell, Missy Pyle, they were all guests on my show. And I just love, love that movie. And then there's another dog, Hachi, A Dog's Tail with Richard Gere. Did that win? I mean, that was just incredible. Do you remember that, that film? Was- beautiful film and it's so it's a long line of fabulous it represents a long line of fabulous stories that we all hear of where from for example in australia the dog on the tucker box and and this japanese example of devotion to owner and then there's of course the i did not myself know this but i and i'm sure you probably do so my ignorance comes to the fore when i tell you this but discovering that fido the dame fido is from a dog in italy in the bologna area and he would go to the bus stop every night after work for his owner so many many years after his death and so fido in the 1940s i think that was pretty much i might be wrong and incorrect but that's where this so popular name for dogs and our awards of course originates from which is slightly marvelous because it was put just post-war and you know relatively recently that that huge connection was made between that italian dog and his his owner who sadly died I had no idea that that's where the name Fido came from. That is so powerful, Toby. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, that adds great power to that name. And that brings us right to your project, the Fido Awards. So now tell us about the Fidos. Well, the Fidos are an acronym, very handy one. Which came first, the acronym or the Fidos? I don't know. But it's (laughs) four incredible dogs on screen. I knew that. Well, boom. And we set this up because I was doing the Palm Dog in Cannes and we were becoming quite a little fixture. And at the festival, we're probably, well, we're certainly one of the best known sidebar events and we're increasingly um, getting profile, which is great. And what, um, whilst doing that, came to mind was it's all very well that the films in Cannes can win awards, but surely there are, there's, of course, a whole other world of cinema that gets released through the year that is passed by. So we it was writing that wrong. And that's what we did was to set up the FIDO Awards in the UK. And we went into the different categories. And probably interesting to say is that this year is a very significant year for the reason that so many films, uh, there's been so many films with dogs in this year. And particularly interestingly, There were some unbelievably dog-centric wonders, notably in the documentary category. So we've created a new category in the FIDO Awards, Dog Docs. And I just wanted to say very quickly in passing that I am Greta, uh, Greta the uh, eco-warrior of a very young age, has two lovely dogs, of which, of course, we see in her documentary. But the other two films are a little bit more offbeat. One is called Stray, and that talks of the um, stray dogs on the streets of Istanbul, which doesn't immediately come to mind as a dog-friendly place. But just one small thing about that film, which, of course, is back to front and top to bottom, dogs, dogs everywhere, is that the dogs wander around the streets, but also wander through the traffic. And the minute you or I saw a dog wandering towards traffic, you just start scooping up in the chair, pushing your back into it, heart to the throat, lump in the throat, very fearful. But quite unbelievably, they were just, because of the lower traffic speed, but the general respect for other uh, users of the road space, the dogs get by very nicely. And the other quickly, to end on the second one, that is in the category for dog dogs. It's called the Truffle Hunters, which pretty much does what it says on the tin of delicious. 
delicacy <laughs> truffle, and they are shown in the in the foothills of of Tuscany, uh, rooting around, and but then going back home with the old gnarled truffle hunters, and it is so unbelievable as they head out in through the woods. All of them together, grunting and groaning with their walking sticks, and then all in jubilation when finally one of these marvelous dogs finds the wonderful truffles they're looking for. But it really is magical. So if you like extra olive oil and you like truffles and you like dogs, well, this film will be a delicacy for you. I love that. I love that. And I want to hear more about the dogs in the Fido films, more about the categories. And we will do that right after this break. And I want to acknowledge Smiley Waiting for us in spirit. Good boy. Pets are part of the family. Make sure you can always afford the quality health care they need with Easy Pet Check. A nationwide pet insurance alternative, with Easy Pet Check, you'll save up to 75% on all your pet's health care at any licensed veterinarian in the U.S. Easy Pet Check accepts all dogs and cats, regardless of pre-existing conditions. Visit EasyPetCheck.com. That's the letters EasyPetCheck.com. Taking care of your pet can be easy with Easy Pet Check. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with the founder of the Fido Awards, Toby Rose. Welcome back, Toby. Good to work. work, work, work. <laughs> so, Toby. I was going to edit that out. I was going to, I don't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> I'm very glad to be back. And suddenly, as you threw your head back there, I was getting a certain sense of Meryl Streep. Oh, my gosh. Well, in your look. Thank you so much. She Obviously, is, in her younger years. Oh uh, well, she she is beautiful then and now. I we all so thank I think you. you're right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Toby, you're the founder of the Fido Awards. So I know you can't show favoritism, and you just talked about the dog docs, the doc documentaries. I'm stumbling over my words here because Smiley's film is called Kindness, a documentary. I call them documentaries, so I can't. The word documentary just doesn't come out of my mouth anymore. But um, so tell us some more about the amazing performances this year by some of the dogs that are nominated. Well, I think what I'm going to do is tell you, you've got to come back to me and say, and don't forget Nomad Land, and we can then really go to town. But before we touch upon that, okay, I'll come back to the lovely UK and tell you that there are a number of incredibly wonderful films. In the Rom-Com Rover section, we had a particularly goodie, which was called 23 Walks. And it's about people in their golden years, older, out walking their pets. And it's a, a rather irascible lady pay, played by a wonderful actress who was the former wife of a very well-known English director called Mike Lee. And her name is Alison Steadman. And she walks her dog and comes across this rough diamond, who is played by Doug Johns, who was a Ken Loach actor. And in parenthesis, I can tell you that uh, he was in the film called I, Daniel Blake, which won the Palm Door in Cannes, but also won, was, was a part of winning an award for Ken Loach called the Palm Dogmanitarian Award, which oh we my. gave to Ken Loach. And the reason we did that was that Ken Loach, to our absolute, I cannot believe, to begin to tell you, amazement, we discovered that Ken Loach, who is known for the social realism and the hard-hitting dramas about everyday life, has included since 1994 a three-legged dog as a symbol of the world of the of society's underdog in ah, every single film. I didn't and we know were that. so amazed. And he had one in I Daniel Blake. We come out of brackets to tell you that 23 Walks is a London Park set, a romance story of people in later life, but absolutely wonderful. So there's that one. And then going over to your side of the world, I'm sure you'll have been aware for many years that. Billy Holiday, 
wonderful yes. singer, was also, and you can imagine, she got her soulful, wonderful delivery and heart and soul from her, in part, from her very great affection for dogs. And those feature absolutely super prominently in a film documentary by Lee Daniels called United States versus Billy Holiday. And so because you've got to try and get to keep some schedule, if I may return to a, a category called Mutt Moment, in which Nomadland Tell us features. about that. Mutt Moment was created because, as we all know, scenes can be stolen. And as we all know, you can watch a film and the role will not be key to the plot or anything, but you just won't forget it. And those moments are often moments involving dogs and they will just spring out in a certain scene. I'll give you an example going back some years. Men in Black, who can ever forget when Officer Frank was <laughs> turned into a pug and singing, I will survive out of the patrol car window? Exactly. We, that is a mutt moment. So going back to this, um, we had in this section, there was, for example, Sound of Metal, which was a very gritty film that got an Oscar nomination for a wonderful actor, British actor, called Riz Ahmed. But within that, there was a wonderful dog, and he was all part of the, the world of people that are you know, hearing impaired and deaf. And not unsurprisingly, the dog was a great comfort. And then there we go then, Nomadland. Now, all I can say is that somebody said, oh, I can't remember many dogs in that, which is so often the case. People will say that. They'll say to me when Cannes Film Festival starts, will there be any dogs? And they'll sort of basically start with a sceptical tone in their voice and one of disbelief that you could ever imagine that dogs would be in the films. And generally, and I touch wood and I don't want to tempt fate, they're always there, loyal and ready for service. But in Nomadland, they were all through the film and absolutely wonderful. And what I thought as was the most wonderful recognition of their role within Nomadland, the Oscar-winning wonder that it is, was that when they picked up their Oscar, well, as we probably remember, they did the howl. That was in honour of a that. poor gentleman yes, they that did. sadly died which is a terrible and awful thing. But what I can tell you is that I felt it made that connection. It was in honour of somebody, but it was also honouring them in a very suitable way. Yes, and that's something I wanted to mention or touch upon is the energy that dogs bring to the film set and to films, the depth of spirit. They bring a different dimension or something. Can you talk about that? I do hit on it, but let's talk specifically about that. Well. I think that it's very much the case that the dogs on set are always hugely popular and they're all, if anything, they're service dogs for the whole of the, of the film set community. Mm -hmm. And that's always a great thing. And, for example, we gave a FIDO Award uh, last year to a film called The Personal History of David Copperfield. It was a sort of updated wonderful modern casting of David Copperfield and it had this most unbelievably fabulously amusing dog within it that was the treasured companion of David Copperfield's wife and we met we talked to the uh, lovely actress Morford Clark who is a very great rising star in the UK and we did a Skype uh, or Zoom interview with her of acceptance when she's on a Lord of the Rings Amazon giant telly series in Auckland, New Zealand, but had so much to talk about with the dog and how it was a scene stealer. And people would get <laughs> borrowing it on the set. <laughs> and it was just, you know, where's the dog? Oh, someone's petting the dog in their trailer or they're throwing a stick or something. So right. it is a levelling thing and it brings people together and is in some ways a sort of therapeutic aid to making a good film. 
Absolutely, I could not agree with you more. And Toby, you have some more special awards this year, and I want to hear more about the event right after this break. Smiley, are you with us? I know you are. Good boy. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise, on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hello, this is Ryan O'Neill, and I'm on a super smiley adventure with Megan Blake. Join us. Everyone's here is super smiley. This message of unconditional love. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with the fabulous Toby Rose, founder of the Fido Awards. Welcome back, Toby. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever it is in your time zone. <laughs> I was waiting to hear what you were going to say. <laughs> you always say something very interesting. So, um, Toby, I read that you have two more extraordinary awards also, the Palm Dog USA Award and Best in the World, right? Tell us about those. Well, let's start with Palm Dog USA. I, some time ago, was thinking, well, let's face it, the palm dog is up close and personal with the palm door. Mm -hmm. I thought, can we get up close and personal with the Oscars? Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, it wasn't so much to do that and be, you know, crowding into a very important and well-protected space. But at the same time, it seemed to make eminently good sense to think of, an American dog in that, you know, the home of the big, big, big films, which is the US of A, that we could hand out some awards. And so it was to be. And we, I went out to LA and uh, there was a dishing out of awards and it was, it was rather wonderful. And may I just say, I'm sure you're there every year in the front row, but got <laughs> to go to the Oscars which was clearly overwhelming for me. That's amazing. And made me feel that I was justified in uh, awarding Palm Dog USA. These dogs are already, I believe that they're ele- their spirits are elevated above ours and that they're so pure. They teach us things. They teach us lessons. But you're bringing these dogs out to us. And I, I think that people who don't have experience with dogs, the few people who don't have dogs, that they learn something by seeing these dogs on screen. Do you think that the actor dogs open up a world to people sometimes? I think that when there's a, a very touching moment, an important moment, a scene-stealing moment, an exciting moment, all different things can happen. I mean, you just go from different films from, I mean, to use just two examples, let's just take As Good As It Gets with Burdell, which was a film that was showered with Oscars. I mean, obviously Jack Nicholson and uh, Helen Hunt, but how amazing was that film? But we all remember so vividly that the irascibility of Jack Nicholson was chipped away, not so much by anyone giving him a good telling off, but just by the deep cuteness of a little four-legged friend. And then moving to another, talking of dogs and surprising scenes, is we go to the film called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where you have this buddy movie which has buddy brand with buddy the buddy brandy the dog and that was a a very exciting and uh, quite physical sense of camaraderie between them and uh, in the car and him having his evening meal in brad's basic little environment but certainly he's never forgotten that brandy needs his dinner and we like that and certainly we also know that brandy played a good role in what he does best, which is protecting Brad. Yeah. And uh, 
all of those things. And they're, they're two different types of dog roles, but on the other two ends of the spectrum, one a very big muscular, that's enough by now, obviously no surprise, the Tarantino. And yeah, right. uh, what was interesting, actually, is that when Quentin Tarantino picked up the Palm Dog Award for Brandy, played by Sir Jury at, at the Cannes Film Festival, he spoke about the role of Brandy and his words meant a lot, but also told us a lot because he said that when he started cutting the film together, he discovered that Brandy was very emotive and Brandy was very key and Brandy was giving a lot to the camera that he had not initially seen. And basically, I think he'd written... Brandy was just like another bit of scenery. Yeah, like a prop. Mind yeah. At the beginning. And then after he, he'd taken his film into the edit suite, then Chajuri playing Brandy was a whole different kettle of fish. Wow. Or in this case, can of dog food. <laughs> yeah, they do have depth that if you are open to seeing it, it will absolutely amaze you. And Toby, you're doing so many things with this, with your awards and this mission. I call it a mission that you're on. I also heard that you're doing a live event with a pop-up shop in London. Is that right? Tell us about the pre-events and how people can come participate in that. Well, I'm, as you know, we discovered at the beginning near the King's Cross and Pancras Eurostar. Well, King's Cross is one of London's oldest stations. And behind that is a whole area that was left abandoned and that miraculously several of the old Victorian railway buildings were saved from demolition because they were listed but they nonetheless did have a pretty torrid existence of uh, being completely abandoned and uh, unloved. That has now all been renovated and huge new buildings have been built notably the mo one of the most gigantic constructions in Europe which will be the new Google HQ. Wow. And this is going to be a new place at the back of the station for all sorts of giant big companies, but also there'll be housing and so forth. It is in this area that there's a place called Coal Drops Yard, which, as the name suggests, is where coal was delivered into London. Right. So basically all the fire grates in London came through these coal drops. and it is in that space that we have our pop-up shop in the very dog-friendly cold drops yard. And we will have within it fabulous opportunity to photograph your dogs in front of the wonderful Fido's logo, created by an American friend of mine. And I sketched it out and he drew it up and we love it. And then we will also be offering doggy obedience classes. And oh, I just was fine. given the list of things tonight, which is, handing out the paw, doing the head turns, all the wonderful things, <laughs> little tricks that people love. And Toby, what are the dates of those? Where can people go to find out, people who are in your area, how can they find out how to get there, how to do this? They come to the Cold Drops Yard and ask anybody, and we're in the kiosk, which is the central community space of Cold Drops Yard, from the 21st of May to the 24th of May. The FIDO Awards, the jewel in the crown, will take place on Sunday, the 23rd of May. And so we're building up the two days. Then we're having a day of excitement with Palm Dog at the lunchtime slot. And in the afternoon, those wonderful dog training sessions with a very successful and loved, beloved East End dog training and dog care service called Doug's Dogs. And they will be doing those wonderful trick sessions, which I think is a fabulous thing. It is. I wish I were going to be in London that week. I would love to come there, but I hope, Toby, that you and I get to meet sometime, maybe in Los Angeles or something. I don't know. You just I feel there. like we share, like we're kindred spirits somehow. I love what you're doing. So which part of Los Angeles do you live in? Well, I was in Malibu. Right now I'm on the east coast of, of the United States in North Carolina, but I was in Malibu for a um, long, long time. I had my horses there, my doggies. So that was my stomping grounds, which is nice. Yes, because it's funny you say that, if I can just add one small thing. Oh, of course. Which is the Palm Dog featured in 
Animals in the Cinema at the Italian National Cinema Museum. Um, and one of the other types of animal that was featured in this were, unsurprisingly, were horses. Yes. And the person that came, I was very lucky to be invited to present the Palm Dog as part of this big blockbuster exhibition. But the horses, this person that spoke to the horse issue was a lady called Patrine Mitchum. And I was very pleased to meet her. But my jaw dropped to the floor when I discovered that she was Robert Mitchum's daughter. And she's the Hollywood expert on horses. Oh. And I just thought that might be of interest to you. It is. And just so you know, I am friends with her daughter, Carrie Mitchum, who was Robert Mitchum's granddaughter, who was also a, a horse girl like me. So it, this is just so such a close little knit spirit family. I don't know. <laughs> My jaw just dropped to the floor with that, with that connection. It is amazing. That is really weird then, because Patrina is a lovely woman. <laughs> and we yes. were walking around Turino, which is the Fiat City, where they have this fabulous exhibition space at the museum and she was a wonderful lady but the fact that she was the daughter of Robert Mitchum was yes it was a very strange feeling the daughter of that legend yes 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 and Robert Mitchum and then Carrie Mitchum that's it's just oh full circle full circle and is there a website if there's not it's okay but is there some place people can go to look on the internet just to re recap absolutely all of this? what is that www.palmdog.com palmdog.com. Wonderful, wonderful, Toby. Keep it simple. I like it. And you'll get back to us. I love that. And everybody also, please stop by and you can view Super Smiley's award-winning kindness film short documentaries on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Megan Blake. Speaking of keeping it simple, that's pretty simple. And they're on our playlist there um, called Kindness Films. The first one is called Kindness, a documentary. Everybody can reach me here at Pet Life Radio through, or through my website at meganblakeofficial.com and at webeginnow.com. You can find everything I'm doing on my YouTube, dog training video, social media, everything on my website. And Toby, Toby Rose, oh my gosh, thank you again so much for all you're doing to promote these beautiful, powerful spirits of these amazing creatures coming to us as actors in film. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. A great pleasure to have talked to you. It really is. And Robert Mitchum and Carrie and Patrine, yeah. we love <laughs> you all. Shout outs to everybody and all the wonderful dog actors and the and the directors that, that work with these dogs and, and bring them in and really see their spirits. Yeah, thank you to everybody. And thank you also to our super producer, Mark Winter. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Mark does our show here and also does my fabulous bumper music that he composed and performs all about sharing kindness with Super Smiley. And to everybody who loves their pets, Thank you all for joining a Super Smiley adventure. And remember, wherever you are with your pets, we begin now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.